Hi everybody, welcome back to Fragmental. He's Chris. And he's Aaron Terence Hughes, and he's here to talk about his line of fragrances and to launch two brand new ones. Stay tuned to FM. I'm very honoured to have another perfumer on my channel. I always love talking face to face to perfumers and from what you guys tell me in the comments, you enjoy it as well. So welcome Aaron Terence Hughes. Nice to meet you. Aaron's here to talk about what got him into perfumery, to talk about the inspirations of his fragrances yep. and he'll be launching, I did in the intro say two new ones, but I believe we've just uh, put a third one there. Yeah. To, to talk about as well. Uh, so let's uh, find a little bit more out about Aaron and then we'll talk about these brand new fragrances. So Aaron, tell us what got you into perfumery and what inspired your line of fragrances? Okay, so I've always loved uh, perfumery and my brain is thinks in music and fragrance and art. So I have a lot of, my mother was an artist and um, but I've also got a lot of science people in my um, family. So when you mix them together, you sort of, you, it's not really surprising that you get um, a perfumer at the end of it. Because okay. I think you have to have a creative, being able to visualize fragrance molecules. Yeah. That's quite a weird one to think about. Mm. And um, so I grew up in Cornwall and all my um, sort of memories are sort of emblazoned with the smell of ozone from the sea, fish and chips on in St. Ives. Um, weird stuff like the smell of chickens we had a chicken farm and i grew up on a chicken and flower farm so the smell of um flowers in the summer uh, in the, the cornish sort of sky yeah you've been doing it so it's very so it's very much about yeah definitely evoking uh, imagery and memories and yeah. feelings and moods yeah and all my pocket money went on essential oils so okay. nine or ten and a, a kid. I, can't, I can't say the same i think my my pocket money went on bubble gum and well mine went that as well cars it was and I used to mix them together and burn them in okay. an oil burner and then uh, they're so toxic my, there's a memory of my mother and my sister standing outside yeah. the house because the house was filled with these toxic god uh, awful and I was inside like no it's the best thing ever <laughs> it was awful so so your career as a perfumer started at a very young age then I think and then my first proper pocket money went I bought Curos uh, in the 80s yeah yeah so uh, like I was how old were you when you bought 13, 12, 13. All right. You must so, have been the only 12, 13 year old smell yeah, like course. But there was this obsession with with smell and with, I always smell stuff. And um, so, yeah, it's always been there. But yeah. I didn't, but I'm very dyslexic. So I didn't think as a dyslexic person, yeah. you could do something like that. And in, in school, it was so bad when I went to school, like the teacher saying, you can't do this, you're stupid. I stood up uh -huh. and told you stupid, which sort of put that sort of pyramid. Mm. There's absolutely no way you can tell me that. So at nine, yeah. I was thinking, I'm going to do, I'm going to show you one day yeah. that you, you can have a different so, brain. So maybe in a way the dyslexia has given you a boost. Oh my God, totally. If you hadn't have uh, had it at school and teachers didn't react to you in that way, it wouldn't have fired you up and empowered you to, to well, go I on Well, I see stuff visually and that's a dyslexic thing. So yeah. I see stuff, I can create stuff on a 3D. So my family or make furniture and they're all very hands-on, mm. very normal people. Mm. So they're all dyslexic, but they all make, they can create stuff and fit stuff, you know, with their brain. So it's, that's a dyslexic brain. Okay. So I'm able to create stuff, a finished fragrance in my brain, and that's a dyslexic brain. And people never talk about how amazing and positive a dyslexic brain can be. They want to say, because you can't spell and you get words jumbled up and you can't do certain things. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got, it's viewed as a negative, isn't it? Rather it's than not. having positive yeah, in ways. Totally, yeah, totally, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And it allows me to be, I'm, I'm very emotional, so I'm a very emotional sort of creative person. So when I create a fragrance, it's yeah. totally something deeper and amazing that I'm creating. I mean, I think it's coming from a great place. It's not just creating something, painting by numbers and, and no. trying to make something that you think people like. It's actually coming from emotions, isn't yeah. it? And, I, you know, if we're honest, I think all the best art in the world comes from someone's emotion, doesn't it? Uh, absolutely. It, you yeah. have to, Films, it, music paintings, as well. Yeah. And like they say absolutely. that the, there's um, musicians that they have to feel that pain to be able to convey it through singing. So yeah. the best singers are able to convey pain and yeah. you feel it. And that's what all of my fragrances have a memory or inspired by someone. Yeah. Uh, and then it's that sort of emotional connection. I cannot make cold fragrance. It, it, I've tried. Yeah. 
and it just doesn't have doesn't that. Work. No, yeah. no, it just smells like chemicals. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have a poetry to hold. No, it all not at all. Yeah. Not at all. It's got to have a story to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you became an expert perfumer at what ten years old? Yeah. Um, how did you How did you get from there to where you are now in 2019? You've released uh, a whole line of fragrances. I mean, there must be what 12, 13. Oh, I don't know. I mean, at home more. I've got at home. I mean, I've got like a. I don't know, maybe a hundred fragrances. Oh, I wow, really okay. don't know. I mean, I, I can't. Right. So there's, it's endless. Yeah. My house is, is if you can imagine, yeah. uh, bottles everywhere. Yeah. Like I do, so one thing that people don't understand is I do all of this, so there is not another person involved in this. Right. So I- One man band. I make it, I put it in the bottles, I put the alcohol in, I put everything on, I'm designing the names, I'm coming up with the, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. so there isn't anybody else involved in this. Wow, I mean, yeah, that's But it's that's not, astounding. it's like cluttered. It's like, yeah. and that's why I'm moving, because I need okay. to um, have a perfume room, and also yeah. I want to teach as well, so it's, that's oh. what I get asked as well. Okay, so teach perfumery. Teach perfumery, oh, wow. I'd love to do that. I love people, and I'd love to be able to um, allow people to create their own fragrance, but actually sit with them, I think it'd be a lovely thing to do. Yeah. It's such a wonderful thing. Fragrance makes people happy. Yeah. It doesn't really have a purpose, except making people happy. Sure. Absolutely. Isn't that nice? It's lovely, lovely, I love it. Um, so, you obviously, you, you didn't start your working life as a perfumer, so tell us about how you started your working life and how that led you in. So I was a dancer, I, I trained to do dancing from about the age of six to 16, and then I went to, I got into uh, Rambe Ballet, and I hated it because there were all posh girls there eating tissue paper, and I thought, I can't, can't be this at all, this isn't me, so I left. I got a scholarship to go and then I went, um, didn't do anything for about a year. Then I did hairdressing for about 15 years. And then, um, but then I started to feel there was so much more to what I could do. So then I did um, science GCSEs, chemistry, biology, maths, yeah. and English. And then I did A-levels. And then I did my first year, I did cosmetic uh, science in London. And that I found. I wanted to do organic chemistry, which is all shapes and learning how molecules fit together and understanding the world through um, molecules and, how, and atoms, how they fit together. Mm. So then I went to Cardiff University and I did a chemistry degree, which is the hardest thing I've ever done, but the best thing I've ever done. Amazing. I can imagine, I, I found um, chemistry, GCSE, incredibly difficult. Yeah, school, it's So bit, I, I can imagine what a degree in chemistry yeah, would be. Just amazing, I loved, loved it, absolutely loved it. It was amazing and okay. it um, broke my brain and then um, it's so difficult yeah. and then I started to bike um, then I went to work in industry in cosmetics and uh, but I always it, the, the signals were always there to um, make fragrance like I developed a uh, body moisturizer for a perfumer and oh. um, so I was speaking to him and I was more obsessed by what he was doing than what I was doing and then I started my first business which was um, safety assessing providing all the legal paperwork for cosmetics and at that point I was wearing um, Tom Ford and Dior, and I was spraying Tom Ford on applying uh, underneath Rose or Jasmine, spraying on the top, and in the end I just thought, I'm spending too many people like myself. And I made my uh, first fragrance, and that took about three years. And then I was just buying, him, all my money is just buying him fragrance compounds, central yeah. oils, and, and then just blending. And, um, and it's through hundreds of thousands of hours and thousands of experiments of knowing what happens when I put this compound into this mixture with this that I know now right. how to make something. Okay. So it's all is a my lot job. of trial and error then. Thousands and thousands yeah. of trial and error. And like my friends, when they come around, get sprayed with stuff. And yeah. what do you think of to that? To test it, yeah. Yeah. Because it because to try something off skin is going to be indicative of, of how the fragrance works more so than just trying it off. So off I, strips I and... spray it on people. I send it out yeah. to people. What do they think? I don't mm. get offended with if people don't like it because I actually think, okay, these are real people. Yeah. Um, if somebody doesn't like something because they've been a bitch, I f that upsets me. <laughs> yeah. But if they don't like it because it's, yeah. it's not sweet enough, it's not this, if yeah. it's constructive, I, I, I find that, yeah. I love it. And, and everyone's got different tastes. Yeah. You know, that, that it's the same with any art form, isn't it? That uh, people will have different opinions and different tastes. Sure. Of what someone may think is the best fragrance ever made in the whole history of the world, someone else but may I think, do well, judge I can't people. wear I, I do judge people on what, what they're wearing. Right. So I, I can sort of tell if someone's trying to be too quirky, they're smelling, yeah. and I smell it, and I think you're buying into the completely into the mark thing. Yeah. But I think there's some really nice um, chemical sort of fragrances, and then there's some really nice chemical and synthetics, mm. and there's some horrible in between. 
I'm, I'm wearing today um, Tobacco Wood and Vanilla by Aaron Terence Hughes. So uh, what did you, what judgment did you make about me? When uh, well, you obviously remember taste, style and the discernment. There you go. There you go. Yeah, All yeah. right. Okay. I uh, picked the right fragrance yeah, to yeah, wear yeah, today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So you, you studied chemistry. Yeah. Uh, you you realised how you could um, put the molecules together. Yeah. And then at some point, obviously, you thought, right, I, I want to uh, combine this uh, this love for, for smells and imagery and emotions with the uh, scientific knowledge of chemistry and create your own fragrances. The, the science helps with knowing um, what stuff's legal because there's obviously some compounds in there which yeah. are allergenic right. and there's some compounds which are uh, you can't use or very restricted yeah so that allows you when i'm starting off something knowing uh where i can go with it it isn't just like throwing stuff in and, yeah. and then having to pass it with all the legal paperwork and then it comes back as failed i have to reformulate it my stuff always has the safety aspect uh absolutely and so i'm a safe my uh, other job is as a cosmetic safety assessor so safety is like paramount and that must be that must kind of cut out of the equation a lot of hurdles to jump over because you know them all you totally. know these hurdles i, I know yeah. i know um how to get stuff legal yeah. we're very strict i'm very i'm very proud to be part of this country because we don't test on animals yeah. in 2013 that was banned and we've got very strict laws and i think that's so yeah. important that's great yeah so on the market currently, you, you know, you have a line of yeah. fragrances. Um, did you, um, what, how did you decide which of the fragrances that you'd made to, to put out into the marketplace? Um, I don't know. It's, okay. it's, it's so intuition that it's not, there isn't anything, um, I mean, going forward, I will. No, no specific strategy, it was just you felt what you loved and you thought you wanted to just put it out there for it's, other people to love. So well. how it works is I'll make it, I'll, I'll wear it for a bit and it depends how many comments I get. Yeah. So if I get stopped and what is it, then I'm like, okay, this will sell. Yeah. It, it's purely for that and if something, um, someone doesn't, I don't get comments, I yeah. don't put it out. And yeah. then I sort of refine it, but it is the one I developed, I wore it in Tesco's yesterday and the woman was like, what is it you're wearing? And I was right. like, okay, there you go. Okay. So, and I knew then that was a, a slight, and it's always that slight change. It's very odd and people sort of commenting on the slight yeah. change. Something that strikes me about all your fragrances is that um, they all smell quite uh, quite big and quite strong. Uh, you, um, you definitely like to make a statement with, with most of the scents. Um, so, is that down to no, that the was a choice. That, you use, no, that, that was a, that was a choice. So it's two yeah. things. I always want my fragrances to. I think if you're buying a fragrance that's over a hundred pounds, yeah, they should last for a long time. Yeah, they should imprint. So if you hug someone, if you touch someone, if you sit in a room, yeah, they should be there. There's that imprinting so important. Yeah, and then uh, it says longevity. It is uh, depth. And it's, I use a lot of real compounds in it. Yeah. So about 20 to 30% of my fragrances have real essential oils, real woods, real, I use real oud. Yeah. So it's- And we're using those real materials. I don't know that much about it, but I think using those real materials do add that depth Absolutely. and the richness. And I love depth in a fragrance because sometimes with a fragrance, the only way I can describe it is it can be nice, but you can smell the bottom of it. You can smell where yeah. it ends. Whereas the fragrances that are the best in the world uh, take you on this deep dive and it's like an infinite depth that you just feel like throughout the whole life of wearing them, you never really get to the end of the fragrance. Sure. It just stays this lovely, deep, kind of rich, full-bodied smell for, for the entire time that you're wearing it. I actually really like um, fragrances from that you don't get in this country from like uh, Dubai. Yeah. Because they tend to have real compounds in them yeah. and they're very strong and they're long lasting. Yeah. And now I think with the way my brain is, um, I'd probably go for something, but they're very, they're really expensive, but they're very nice. Yeah. So, but that's sort of, I'm sort of, I've moved away from very chemical, synthetic, yeah. uh, what you get in, uh, what everyone else is wearing. Yeah. To um, stuff that I like, things that are a bit more niche. A bit different. A, a bit, bit different. A little bit, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. you descri you describe them as, as kind of edgy and cool. Yeah, me. yeah. I, I, that, so that's what you're going for, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, like. I never want to be a, um, a middle-aged man in a suit wearing something that's safe. Yeah. It doesn't interest me. No, no. You want you want something that's wearable, but you want it to be interesting and edgy and cool. Bit nasty. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. A little bit nasty. <laughs> um, so let's talk about um, some of the new fragrances okay. then. So this one I've just picked up, and this is this is what you can expect from this particular line of fragrances. So they come in these lovely white boxes with uh, Aaron's initials engraved at the top here, uh, embossed, sorry, uh, 
And you make all these on your own app? No, oh, they come from oh, China. Okay, the bot, okay. All right, that doesn't sound quite as impressive, but no. um, that's fine. You can't do everything. Um, but the boxes are really nice. I really like those. I think they're classy. And the so when I so initially I wanted something that's very simple. Yeah. So and the names. So the reason that the names in the beginning were yeah uh, Rose Oud Chocolate Rose Oud was because yeah. they had different names initially, but people right. always called them. I want the chocolate fragrance. Right. The chocolate fragrance was called Violet Delirium, uh, but people said I want the chocolate one. I was yeah. like. And then the oud was called storm. People yeah. wouldn't say storm. People say, "I want the oud storm." So I thought, okay. "I'm just going to make it so simple." Make the, the names a little bit more descriptive yeah. about what's actually. But in which them. isn't yeah. me. Easier, easier for people yeah, to remember yeah. as well. And the bottles are. They're, they're really simple and elegant. Uh, they're uh, a glass bottle. These are 30, 30 50. 50 mil. Yeah. Um, and they're X straight. Are they? Or, What's that? Uh, so you've got the, uh, the so the concentration. Oh, so they're, they're, in terms of eau de toilette, eau de parfum. Oh no, they're twenty percent minimum. Yeah, so they're at, so yeah, they're, Santal so. Extreme and Blood Orange are thirty. Right. Okay. And the one I'm releasing next year is probably going to be about forty. Right. Okay. So so really, whether it's eau de parfum or extra, it's less of a consideration to you. It's more about how the how it smells. Yeah. Ra the price ra doesn't ra rather than the concentration. No, yeah. so Santa whether it's extra or EDP, it's always, whatever the concentration, yeah. it's it's a standardized I, price, which I is don't think about money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think about money at the end. Yeah. That's not my thing in the bit so in the beginning when I'm creating fragrance it isn't right, it's gonna be thirty percent, so that's gonna be working out what ten percent is and then calculating it up to yeah. that way. It is just one four five because yeah. It's the effect I want, like from Blood Orange and Santal Extreme, to be crazy strong. Yeah, they were like crazy strong, offensive, mm. beautiful. So you wear it, and it's like people can smell yeah, you, Santa like um, in the next room, yeah. and smell you for days after. That was the ethos, yeah. and I don't want to charge for like. I think it's a bit naff to, to always charge more. Yeah, yeah. So just keep it a, a standard price. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and we should say that you can buy these from Aaron's website. I'll leave a link to his website in the description, and you can also uh, purchase them from Bloom Perfumery in London, and also Fascinations Perfumery, which is in Lancashire uh, near Blackpool. Again, um, links to those websites will be in the description. <coughs> should we talk about these new ones? Yeah, let's do yeah. It. So. Aaron, are, are we are we launching this? this yeah, this, that's, this today? We that's gonna, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is, okay, so we're going to launch. Talk about three brand new fragrances that, that Aaron wanted to come on my channel and just officially mention that he was launching them. So the first one we have here is, I love the name of this, Jasmine Narcotique. So let's let me spray this one and smell it as as you're telling us about the fragrance. So there what inspired go. this Give one? Me one as well. Yeah, we'll do. How did you um, you take that? What inspired you to make Jasmine Narcotique? Uh, so, um, this contains real Jasmine, Jasmine yeah. Sandback, and uh, it also contains night blooming Jasmine, yeah. which is a slight difference. And Jasmine, when you look at the chemical breakdown, actually has a lot of um, narcotic compounds, a lot of indels, yeah. which smells mothballs. So, there is, um, this is where you see the chemistry is coming in. It's yeah. like, so, I actually wanted to create, uh, Jasmine was the first compound that I smelled yeah. that I absolutely was like this incredible yeah. journey that goes in my head of it contains other things yeah but so what i wanted was a fragrance that smelled of cocaine yeah so this fragrance is not for people who want to uh, be safe this nope. is for people who are um the sort of person i'd imagine this took five years to develop so this yeah. was like a labor of love yeah. my, my friends sort of know that how many attempts of sprays they've had on it yeah but i actually wanted a fragrance that smelled like uh, so I imagine a per probably um, I imagine metrosexual sort mm -hmm. of male or female. Not really. None of my fragrances are unisex, but I imagine sort of a Chelsea sort of person yeah. who has a lot of money and who likes really good cocaine. Okay. So that's and uh, who likes when they walk into a room to be noticed and you smell different. I'm totally not that person, but <laughs> this is incredible. But it's still wearable. It's absolutely. Not, oh, yeah, this yeah. is so wearable. So. Um, a lot of people often say that Tom Ford's Tuscan leather reminds them of cocaine. Now, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't know that. Um, so, but people uh, who uh, who do know the smell of cocaine have told me that yeah, they they think it does smell like it. Now, the thing with Tom Ford's Tuscan leather is a lot of guys like it, but it is quite a divisive fragrance, and I think a lot of um, a lot of particularly female partners don't like Tuscan leather and I think it is the uh, the very intense leather note that you get uh, with this you I would say you get that 
cocaine vibe that Tuscan leather gives you, but you don't have that leather quality no. that, that makes Tuscan leather so divisive. This is brighter than Tuscan leather, yeah. it's more uplifting, but it does have that that similar... As it dries down, yeah. that's when you start to smell the dirtiness, yeah. and you'll sort of smell the, um, there's a slight sort of um, chemical solventy. Yeah. Uh, what I wanted it to smell like was, and this is, so this is when my brain, the chemistry mixes with the artistic brain, you see. Yeah. I wanted to have the smell of a 10 pound note and coke and then to so and have that solventy sort of synthetic yeah dirty see now this is when the the i start describing stuff it's not sort of so straightforward so sort of city and um, chemical and yeah. Beautiful as well, so, on it, so it's got this sort of filth on the bottom. It's a very addictive smell. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. It, it is, a, it's, but, it's, a, it's a beautiful scent. It's not too off the strip anyway. It's not too obnoxious. It's not in your face. Everyone likes a bit of filth. Who doesn't? Yeah. Well said. Uh, let's let's move through these uh, so the video doesn't end okay. up being too epic. So, um, so that is Jasmine Narcotique. I really like that and I can't wait to uh, to wear this. Now we have two two other ones here. So these are Narcissus and Athena. Yes. So quickly tell us about the background of these. So I got um, inspired by Greek stories. Yep. I was reading a lot of uh, like the classics, and um, I'm which one's that one? Uh, Narcissus. Narcissus is a. I wanted to create a beautiful man's fragrance that was classic. Yeah. For any age, but I would imagine uh, somebody who takes a lot of pride in their appearance. Uh, but once to smell beautiful and it's more masculine it dries down to a lot of woods so the, it's a fig based fragrance yeah. I was fiddling around with this one for ages this was a labour of love this one again while you're talking yeah yeah I was going through like should I make it tobacco should I make it vanilla should I do put rum in it should I do this and I thought no no and I kept going back to fig and I kept going back to uh, wanting something sweet beautiful but goes down to woods but it's mm. got brightness so this one is very very easy to wear it's and I, that's what exactly what i wanted i wanted a very yep. easy to understand fragrance you spray on lasts about 10 12 hours um doesn't have any sort of um, filthiness to it so yeah. imagine a professional uh, beautiful looking yeah man or a very strong woman because it's got a very clean yeah. um characteristic to yeah. it the fig is lovely and doesn't smell a lot of fig fragrances can be quite light no i wouldn't do something this, light this no this, this 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 isn't light this is this is rich uh, so yeah, I, I do I like it wanna, yeah, yeah I, I i do like this but i wouldn't wear it all right okay yeah but I no no I, maybe, maybe i'd wear it if i do something professional but i didn't do yeah. any i don't really dress up in a suit and go anywhere, but that's what i would, yeah. if it was something where it was like a business meeting yeah that's what i'd wear okay. it for and that's what i imagine somebody who's um professional uh, in a city drives a nice car a nice apartment wants something yeah. you know really beautiful and that's a, when i was creating it i had this idea of this person and mm. i can sort of you know you can hear i'm visualizing this person what would get into their mind and their their fragrance is very important but they don't want to smell commercial but yeah. they want to sort of smell a bit commercial yeah do you get what i mean yeah i do i do and um, this uh, so this comes in a different bottle so this is a, a cheaper range isn't it in, it's in the a black bottle so, so how much it, is this one that's 70. Okay, so that's 70, and is that 30 mil? 30 mil. 30 mil, yep. And uh, there's, uh, so that, I mean, that is an amazing fragrance. The, the next few launches are going to be in that because I want to create, I don't want to, my whole ethos is to create, to have somebody for everyone. Yeah. So that it's not like, because the, the expensive stuff can take, it's expensive because it contains expensive stuff. Yeah. The way I can get around that is having a smaller bottle. Mm. And it just means that I'm not excluding people who haven't got the money. Yeah. Because I want everyone to, to yeah, enjoy sure. wearing something beautiful. Yeah. This I love. So this is Athena. Yeah. This Let's spray that one. This is a. Um, so you would wear this one. Yeah, I do wear it. Yeah, I yep. go. Th I go through a bottle a week. So uh, Athena was the goddess of wisdom and the goddess of war, and she was the adversary. Yeah. So dyslexic brain yep. to so Aries. I Okay. And I wanted to create, I'm so fed up with women being portrayed as like this wilting flower. So Athena, I was very specific about and I knew exactly what I wanted to um, uh, to create. And um, so it, when I first launched this, I did uh, market testing and I went, my friend runs a uh, Black Hair and Beauty Awards in London. I went down there and tested all my fragrances and all the black women loved chocolate rose nude. Yeah. So I, and I love, strong powerful 
uh, women, but I really love uh, strong, powerful black women. I saw this amazing black woman running in Manchester and she had this like uh, amazing hair. And I was like, she would wear this. So I want this sort oh, of yeah. slightly um, sweet. So it's, it's a sweet it's, it's lovely. Uh, cherry. And it's got neroli. Like smell yeah, oh, I love it. Yeah. It's neroli sandwood. So it's got the sandalwood and yeah. then it's it's got the sort of chocolate to it as well. And then it goes yeah. up into peach and um, coconut. But women are strong, powerful women are seen, I don't know why they're undermined, I think we've got so much like this awful male energy at the moment, you know, mm. like, I think it's awful. Yeah. And um, I, I think men need to be more t attached into creativity and that sort of slightly female sort of energy. Yeah. It doesn't always have to be this sort of powerful war, crazy. Alpha male type Oh my stuff. God, get over, yeah. just get over yourself. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I really love women that are um, strong and, and uh, okay with their sexuality, not yeah. afraid to be who they are. And so that is right. great. That I wanted a very uh, powerful, beautiful, uh, most, this I would say is more slightly fe female. Um, now, since this is slightly more male yeah. because of the wood compounds and the musk I use, yeah. uh, Athena's slightly more female. I could definitely wear either of those I, two though. I prefer uh, Athena myself yeah. because it is such a beautiful, edible fragrance. Yeah, and I, I prefer good. that. It is, it is. But um, oh, so good. But that that one is. This uh, is what you're wearing today, is it? That is what I I'm smelled it on you when you came. Yeah, in, I um, covered yeah, myself. Yeah, now it. it's dried down. I've just made the connection. I spray it yeah. in the uh, tumble dryer. I, lo I yeah. love it that much. So my my house, my I, my dog smell of it as well. Not intentionally, it's but like, when yeah, it is a little bit aldehydic. I, I guess it has like a lovely airy nature to it as well. It's got nozonic. Uh, ah, right. There you go. Very good. Yeah. It's got nozonic sort of to sort of lengthen it and yeah. to sort of stop because the the way it's built is really a lot of very very heavy compounds. Yeah. So you can sort of extend it by adding uh, ozonic sort of compounds yeah. uh, right into the middle of it. Yeah. Uh, clever. Yeah. Good. It's. I, I. I love it. I mean, I'm really impressed with with all these three. We're gonna give these two uh, black ones away: Narcissus and Athena. Whoever receives these you're in for a real treat. So if you would like to win these, then all you have to do is drop a comment below this video and just say why you'd like to win them. Aaron's explained a little bit about what inspired him to make these fragrances. So uh, bear that in mind and, and just give us a little, a little reason why you would like to win both these fragrances. So it'll be one winner that wins both of these uh, fragrances. So I think we'll draw that to a close. Excellent. Aaron, thank you for bringing these my onto pleasure. my channel to, to launch, give the official launch. That's pretty exciting Perfect. for Fragmental. And uh, it's been great to meet you. I, I know my viewers love meeting the perfumers and it's been great to hear your story and what's inspired you uh, to make your fragrances. It's exciting. So thank you for sharing that. It's exciting to get uh, people seeing the person behind it's not a, i'm not a corporate i'm not being told by marketing um it's completely passion and uh yeah. creativity driven yeah and this library that we're filming in now just smells amazing yeah won't ever come out of here i know uh well thank you very much for watching everybody i hope you found it useful i hope you enjoyed it remember keep tuning into fm and keep smelling good mm -hmm.